2023 has come and gone another year. Yeah, these are flying by. But for you, maybe. Not for me. Oh, okay. It felt very long for me. But every year has felt very long for me. Well, it's in the bag now. 2023 has come and gone. Another year on this weirdly shaped rock flying through the it, it's infinite spherical. expanse. How is it weird? It's, it's a sphere. How is that weird? Most things don't normally take it the shape of a sphere. Water well, I guess, I guess, okay, well, I guess if we're talking about most things, that means that we have to include the universe, and then in which case I would, I would, I guess... As far most, as we know. Are there more planets than there are... The universe is a sphere, and the universe is most things. We don't know. No, I think the universe is like an ovoid shape. <laughs> we can't check. I don't know. It's. I'm sure we can check, but no, it's we just can't. Like, we can't even observe the end of the universe. It's like the observable universe. Yeah, the observable. So, <laughs> why are we talking about this? It's supposed to be a best of list. Yeah, happy best of 2023. It's welcome to our best of 2023 list, where we talk about the best things of 2023 for us specifically, not the best things of that year, because Lord knows we haven't gotten to all the different. Games that have come out this year and seen all the different things. It's just the things we found this year that we enjoyed. I don't know what you're talking about, man. My best of list is the actual best of. Oh. If you don't, if, if it didn't make it on this list, then it's terrible and you shouldn't waste your time with it. I see. Yeah. Well, let's hear... Uh, I have a very high opinion of myself. I can tell that, yes. I actually don't. I really hate myself. Well, you're putting up a good front. <laughs> it's one of, that's one of my favorite things when people, when people are like, you're kind of annoying. You can't hate me as much as I hate myself. <laughs> all right, think think I'm annoying. You only have to deal with how I'm around. I gotta I gotta live with this. <laughs> I gotta live with this. Just reminds me of the episode of The Office where uh, Daryl says to Michael, he's like, "Every day you gotta you gotta wake up knowing that you gotta be you." I couldn't do it. I'm not that strong. <laughs> anyway, best of 2023. I guess this isn't. It gonna be in a particular order. Mine's well, not. I... I'll, I'll have like the best of. Sure. Uh, like my my thing that is the best of. Okay. Uh, but then you know I guess this isn't gonna be in a particular order. I actually had a list of things that didn't make the cut. Oh really? Yeah. Would you like to hear it? Yeah. Let me. You know what? Let me hear your. I didn't do that. Let me hear your list of things that didn't make your best of 2023. It's weird to start off a list like that, but let me hear it. I wanted to start off on a bit of a downer note so we could finish strong. So these are things that, for one reason or another, just weren't good enough to make my list. The entire year. No. Not oh. not something quite so esoteric. So last year you mentioned Tunic, and I tried it out, and unfortunately I did not as have as good a time with it as you did. How fucking dare you? Uh, did you ever beat that game? No, I didn't. <laughs> Neither did I. I. I beat the first boss, I got one of the three pieces of the Triforce, but the thing that killed it for me was I, I, I could not navigate. I'm terrible, you, you don't have any waypoints. I know there was an in-game map you could assemble yourself by collecting pages, but yeah. I, I just couldn't figure it out. The, the reason, I, and that game isn't on my best of list, but the reason I like that well, game it, is... It was, it was last year. Tunic was on your best of list last year. Was it? <laughs> yes. I don't think it was. Was it actually? It, it was, yeah. I don't remember. You want to pull it up right now and see? Because it yeah, is. Yeah, I kind of do. I don't know <laughs> if I believe you. <laughs> I'm not gaslighting you. You actually put it on your best of list. Has your opinion soured that much on that game, or has it just been so forgettable? It was good at the time, but you you felt no need to go back to it. I'll let you look it up. Oh yeah, all right. It was but no. It's it's still a, it's still a really good game. The reason I the reason I like it is because it reminds me of old Zelda games. Yeah. So like yeah, I can understand it being difficult to navigate. The first time I tried to play Link's Awakening, I kept getting lost. Sure. Like I didn't understand how the how to navigate the map. So that's that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to be like. Old Zelda games. So yeah, I guess I understand that it, like you kept getting lost and you couldn't figure out where you were supposed to go. That's one of the things that kills a game for me is I, I don't like being lost. I have to have some kind of direction, some kind of guiding force. If I'm allowed to explore the world and my elements and there's no guiding force that I, I... I'm just tired of walking in circles and not knowing where I'm supposed to be going. That's why Mike hates Skyrim. It's no joke why I didn't like Fallout 3 for the first two years. Until I came back to it. Fallout 3 is an exception because Fallout 3 is just an absolute fucking nightmare to try to navigate all the stupid subway tunnels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly like that. It's like trying to navigate it's, the subway tunnels. It sucks. It sucks trying to navigate the subway in Fallout it, 3. At least Fallout 3 gave you a waypoint. I guess. Anyway, so yeah, Tunic didn't make your best of list. Uh, there were would, you you say it's still a, would you say it's still a good game? Did you enjoy it? 
I enjoyed it conceptually for an hour or two, but after that, I was n- no need to go back to it. Okay. I liked what it did with the assembling pages for an instruction manual. It takes me back to the years I was flipping through the Super Mario 64 manual, looking at all the pictures and learning all the tricks. But aside from that nostalgia burst, it's it's hard for me to go back and consider that uh, a game worth my time. The reason I the reason I never finished it is because I was playing it towards the end of 2022, mm. and then when 2023 started, multiple games came out right at the start of 2023, and then I just didn't end up going back to Tunic. I see. I should go back to it. I need to actually play more of that game. Yeah. It's just there's too many there's too many games. There there is a lot. Another thing that could have been on my list but didn't make it was Futurama. I'm happy they came out with new episodes of Futurama. I watched them all, and they were all okay. None of them were particularly bad, but none of them were that that great. I really do enjoy Futurama as a series, but I feel like this round of 10 episodes didn't really have any bangers. It was, uh... They only did 10 episodes? What is it, a British TV show? A lot of seasons are coming out with, like, 10 episodes or 8 episodes here and there. That's just smaller seasons these days. I, I... I personally am going to disagree with you on on them making more episodes of Futurama. I view I view that the same way that I view The Simpsons of fucking stop. Stop making more episodes of it. It needs to be done. We're on like what season 40 of The Simpsons? Knock it off. It doesn't need to have gone on that long. I I'm not going to dispute you on that, but a lot of people would have said the same thing about the original run of Futurama. It didn't have to come back for the Comedy Central era, and it did. And there were a lot of really great episodes that I'm glad I was able to watch. And uh, it's a shame that there aren't any really good episodes so far. I think there's decent episodes, but yeah, as, as much as I love Futurama, if this is what they're going to give us, then maybe it, maybe next year, the next season will be good, have some good episodes. But if it doesn't, then yeah, maybe Futurama should have ended where it ended. My, my personal opinion is I really don't think shows should go past 10 seasons. Well, technically, this is only on its like eighth season. Yeah, it's... Basically, like I feel like a decade is the is a good time frame for when a show should be around. Mm. Just like have it around during you know ten years, and then after that, it's kind of like I don't want to say it's not culturally relevant anymore, but unless you've got a really good writing team that's that's able to either keep the show timeless or keep the show contemporary, it's got to be one of the two. Yeah, it's really hard, at least from what I've noticed, it's really hard for TV shows to blend timeless and contemporary mm. because either you end up with a show that is mostly timeless, but you have, like, Gangnam Style in the middle of the video, and it's just like, wow, that's dated as hell now. Or you end up with a show that's just nothing but contemporary references, and then it's just not funny five years later. Well, to go off on a bit of a tangent, I did watch an episode of The Simpsons recently. I heard good things about seasons 33 and 34. It's kind of crazy they're on that season. Um, I think they're on season 38, man. They're on 35, I believe. And I watched an episode a few days ago, and it was... Yet another episode about Homer and Marge's rocky marriage and oh my God, why are they still? Do- this is why. I mean, this is why The Simpsons needs to stop. Like, why are they doing that? Last year they had a couple of really good episodes that broke the mold. They they weren't stuck where they were. They were trying some new things. They were experimenting, and I I liked what they did. I mean, we're getting off we're getting off on a whole <laughs> a whole whirlwind tangent here. But yeah, the Simpsons isn't on my early, list either. Early episodes of Simpsons was like Homer was Homer was a decent dude. He wasn't the smartest guy. But he was like a decent dude that was trying to do right by his family. Hey, he was choking Bart all the time, though. I don't know. Uh, yeah, you know, it's it's weird. Like familial abuse is uh, timeless. It's timeless. It's 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 really interesting, even going back to the early two thousands and seeing what you could get away with in the early two thousands, yeah. and you cannot get away with that anymore. Mm. Anyway, choking Bart aside, early episodes, <laughs> early episodes of The Simpsons. Homer is a decent dude who's maybe not the the smartest guy, but he's just kind of like an everyman. And then more recent episodes, he is just the dumbest motherfucker on the planet. And it's just like, why is it, why are he and Marge even married to each other? Because mm. in the early episodes, you could tell that they actually loved each other. Yeah. But then now in these most recent ones, it's like, I remember there was an episode, I say recently, it's within the last like five years. There was an episode where like the plot of the episode is Homer gets divorced from Marge. Yeah. And like he he gets in a weird relationship with this, with this girl that's got a bunch of tattoos and it's like he's actually happy with her, but they have a really weird relationship. And then it's it's just revealed that that basically is just like a dream that Homer's having while they're at like marriage counseling. Yeah. And it's just like, why is this an episode? This is not consistent for these characters. No. That's why I say The Simpsons needs to end because it's just like your characters are no longer consistent. Mm-hmm. It's kind of the same thing with, um, I haven't watched, granted, I haven't watched Family Guy in 10 plus years. 
uh because it just doesn't interest me it's that sure. humor isn't for me anymore fair yeah but like the early if you watch the early episodes of family guy before the show got canceled again peter is not smart but he's not like a complete idiot yes and then in the most recent episodes it's like my guy is actually stupid. Yeah, he behaves in a very dumb way. And it's just, I, you know, it, it's I know that that's what's getting views. Did you put Peter, Peter in Fortnite? Did you know about that? Yeah, Peter Griffin's in Fortnite. It was yeah. pretty funny. Isn't that weird? Yeah. It's just odd to me. That's odd that you have a game that has Leon S. Kennedy. Oh, is, is Resident Evil in Fortnite? And Isaac Clark. And Peter Griffin. And also a man with a cat head. And Rick and Morty and Futurama characters. And just every cultural mind milestone thrown in there. Goku, why not? Um, you, you'll have to you'll have to update me on this one. Oh yeah, Indiana Jones is in that is in that too. Probably, yeah. You'll have to update update me on this one. But are people still watching Rick and Morty anymore? Did yeah. that like just completely fall off no, once uh once all the the stuff about um Justin Roiland. Yeah, Justin Roiland came out. No, that. Uh, I haven't seen any. In I haven't seen any incredibly intolerable fans of Rick and Morty online recently. So that's, that's why good. I was asking. No, I've been watching this season of Rick and Morty, episode five of season, I believe seven. This is. It was really good. Yeah, it's had it's had a couple of bangers. It didn't make my list, but it did make my list last year. But arguably, the season this year is even better. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. It did some really great things with it. All right. It's just again, it's not. It's, I don't particularly care for it. It's not for me. But, like, I don't... Not to be a cranky old fuck, but, like, I don't like anything. Yeah, sometimes so. it feels that way. Yeah, it, it, it does feel... Like, I, I basically just don't watch TV. I get a lot of questions of, like, Zach, do you watch this show? Do you watch this? And it's like, no, I don't watch TV. I don't watch, I don't watch anything. There's so many different ways you can watch it. I know, I don't care. I watch stuff that's on YouTube. That's basically the media that I consume is I watch stuff on YouTube. Yeah. I don't watch television. I really don't watch movies. Unless it's, like, something that actually looks really interesting but like even stuff that actually looks really interesting i was super hyped to watch the movie the green knight and then that movie came and went and like i still haven't watched it Ooh, did the super mario brothers movie come out this year i think i should have put that on the list because i did watch that movie and i had a great time with it i heard that it was really good i heard it was really well received well received in fact i'm putting that on the list sorry number five you're getting bumped down which ironically was mario odyssey I agree. The 1990s Mario movie was absolutely amazing. That movie is great. It's a wonderful time capsule of the 1990s. It sucks as a Mario movie. <laughs> it's an amazing movie. I love I love the Super Mario Brothers movie that, yeah. from the 90s, but it sucks as a Mario Brothers I, movie. I, I grew up with that and the, the Mario rap. That's nostalgia for me, too. Swing your arms from side to side. Come on, everyone. Let's go. Do the Mario. Yes, I love it. Anyway, tangent over. What else is not on my list? Overwatch 2? Yeah, I've... I've thankfully Why? not been brought back to that. Overwatch should be on everyone's worst of 2023 list. Well, no, most people have forgotten about it. It's the worst of 2022, and then we all moved on. Another thing that's not on my list is Inside Job Season 3, because even though last year I put Inside Job Season 2 on my best of list, uh, Netflix canceled the series, so now we're never getting a Season 3. But it was a good show for the 18 episodes we got, I suppose. Sucks. Pizza Tower is also not on my list, even though it was a fun game that you and I played, and it's got some great music. Uh, it's kind of hard, and I, I'd never... Pizza Tower is amazing, and I suck at that game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thank you for putting it very concisely. Yeah. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3 is a, a lot of people's game of the year, but I have not gotten around to it. You haven't gotten around to it. I'm not sure how much interest you have in it. I do have interest, but I, I just don't have time I right played now. a little bit of it, and I was just like, yeah, I'm not really... I'm not particularly interested. Yeah, and it, it does seem like the kind of thing that I might be interested in, but... Again, you would absolutely love it. Yeah, just gotta give me some time to get around to it. Did you like... You liked Dragon Age in Inquisition, right? I thought Dragon Age Origins, the first game, was the best. Inquisition, I tolerated. But anyway, I guess since the Mario movie just got bumped up to my top five, I'll put Mario Odyssey on this didn't-make-the-cut list. Because uh, I did play that. I beat it. It was a great game. I had a lot of fun with Mario Odyssey. Took me back to my Mario 64, Mario Sunshine days, just bouncing around these worlds... And the last thing that didn't make the list that probably could have made the list was Starfield, because I played it, it was okay, and uh, I've got really no interest to go back to it, really. Yeah, I have, Starfield isn't on my list either. I really have no reason to go back to it. It's a very, I will use the, the quote that I saw from somebody, or that I saw from someone else, it is aggressively mid. Yeah. It really is just, it's not bad, but it's like, it's definitely not good. It's... It's got a lot of underlying problems, and I'm not sure they'll be able to fix that. The writing is... There's spots in the game where the writing for specific little small events is really fun, 
but the overall writing is just like so boring. Yeah, I know writing is a big thing for you. Quest design is a big thing for me, and I am really not inspired by quest design for a lot of the quests that I played. Yeah, I wish it was. I wish it was better. And then they're they're like, oh, we're updating it. We're adding vehicles to the game, and it's like, dude, vehicles are not what you should be focusing on. I don't want to drive a car between these outposts that are three thousand kilometers. To get me back into that game, you'd basically have to overhaul the entire procedurally generated system because it is awful and I don't want to visit any of those planets. The thing that Bethesda did really well was exploration of handcrafted environments. Once they started going to the procedurally generated And then stuff, they went to procedurally generated planets, which is just boring. Even back when you had Radiant Quest in Fallout 4 and Skyrim, th those are the worst things. Those are the worst quests. Anyway, now that we're done talking about all the negative things, why don't you start us off with your best of top five? My my top five for this year. We're gonna get the goofy one out of the way. Vampire Mansion. Oh, the. I'm not talking about Vampire Survivors. Vampire Survivors is the top-down game where it's whatever. Yeah, you're pixel shooting at monsters, and it's a lot of fun because it's auto battling and you're just moving around and everything's yeah. dying all around you. I'm not talking about that. It's an etchy game where you play as someone. It's, it's basically you play hide and seek. From a big booby vampire. Yeah, it's a sketchy game. It, you're being chased by a sexy vampire in a yeah. mansion, and she catches you, and then she rubs her tits in your face. That's kind of how it goes. She doesn't rub them in your face. She just wiggles them at you. Come <laughs> yeah. on, get it right. I had more fun playing a $3.99 game from South Korea <laughs> where porn is illegal. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. That's why that's why there's no that's why there's no nipples or or um or sexual things in there because porn pornography is illegal in South Korea. I see. It's, it's as far as I know anyway. Um I had more fun playing this $3.99 big booby vampire game than a lot of games you've actually purchased this year. Yeah, than a lot of other games that I spent money on this year. And like they keep updating it. They just came out with another update for it. For free, granted it's not a lot of content. Again, the whole game is very short. You can probably beat the entire game in like an hour. But you but seem to just, enjoy it. They for... just keep adding more content to it. <laughs> All right. It's ridiculous. I don't understand how this game is that much fun. Anyway. I'm, I'm glad you found a game you really enjoyed and had a blast with it. It was absolutely hilarious. I had a blast streaming it. I had the video that I made for it. Is I, I thought it was really funny. I, it was really fun to make that video. It was just It's just an enjoyable game for $3.99. And it, again, it's just like... I miss, I miss when video games were actually fun <laughs> and not this 80 hour endeavor that you have to, you have to dedicate an entire like three months of your life just <laughs> yeah. to play this stupid game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Vampire Mansion is on my, my best of 2023 list. Okay. I guess number five for me would be Slay the Spire. I spent a lot of time playing that card battler game. Again, I'm not very good at this one either, but I've gotten up to some of the higher ascension levels and then I just smash my head against a wall but it's a lot of fun trying out different strategies and trying to see what cards i can work with other cards and it just I, I don't know it's one of them smart games that i'm not smart enough for but Neat. i have fun with it and there's there's the downfall modded content which basically lets you play in reverse you play as the bad guys going down the spire which is basically like a whole nother game and i had a blast with that it's just a lot of great stuff play the spire's got a lot of good stuff going for it and there's a lot of a lot of other card battlers out there that are like, play me, play me. And it's like, no, nah, I just want to play more of Slay the Spire. Sorry. I'm not a big fan of like card battling games, but I'm glad you enjoy them. Those puzzler games. Yeah, they get me. What's next for you? The next one for me is the Resident Evil 4 remake. Ooh, all right. When I was playing it on stream, um, I had a lot of people asking me like, oh, should I play the original one? And it's like, no, just play this one. Yeah, it's, it's one of the, it's one of those rare instances of a remake that I think is just as good as, if not better, than the original one. There are some people that would disagree with you on that because they have a lot of nostalgic fondness for the original. But if you've never played either of them, then yeah, you could probably skip the original and just play the remake. Yeah, and I think the I think that the original is a little is almost a little too hokey. Eh, some people like that. You know, I like that. I mean, there was the whole no panties, no buy fiasco when the game originally came out. But like, sh shut up. Yeah. You can find porn online. Just go look at porn. Play Vampire Mansion. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, that's not the only hokiness people have a fondness for. I don't know. I got really sick of people just going, no thanks, bro. Okay. Anytime someone would, anytime someone would mention the new Resident Evil. Yeah. Whatever. I really liked playing the new Resident Evil 4. I thought it was absolutely amazing. They did such a good job making that game. And I think it would be really cool if they did the same thing for 5. 
Yeah, we could have some fun with that. Capcom, it would be really cool if you did the same thing for Resident Evil 6, but then just completely rewrote Resident Evil 6 and made it an actually cohesive story that actually makes sense. Like, just get rid of get rid of Jake and get rid of Pierce. Get rid of both of them. Just completely redo 6. You don't even need to put Helena in there. It's fine. Just get rid of all of them. They all suck. That sounds like a lot of work. What's an easier job is taking Code Veronica and Resident Evil Zero and turning those into uh, enjoyable games. I would say Resident Evil Zero, yeah, but Code, Code Veronica, no. That game needs just to be erased from existence. You should. You would say the same thing about Resident Evil Six, but if they made it good, then maybe we'd enjoy it. I'd rather play Code Veronica than Six, because then at least it's a classic Resident Evil game. Sure. Six is just Call of Duty, but it, with it's, Leon. It's also long. Oh God, that game goes on for so fucking long. We're not or, talking about that. We're talking campaigns. about Resident Evil. Yeah. We're talking about Resident Evil Four. Resident Evil Four. They did an amazing job. It's really good. I wish that Capcom would actually hire union voice actors. It'd be nice if they had the same voice actors consistent across different entries in the series. Yeah, Resident Evil Four. I thought it was really good. I had a lot of fun playing it. I played through it so many freaking times. Separate Ways came out later in the year, and Separate Ways wasn't bad. Okay. That was uh, that was very enjoyable. All right. Yeah, it was. They also came out with Mercenaries mode later on, which was again really fun. It was a. Uh, it was an enjoyable game. Okay, could you play as Tofu this time, Hunk and Krauser and uh, all those characters? Hunk is in the Mercenaries mode. You can play as Luis in Mercenaries mode, which is really fun. All right. They made Luis so fucking cool in the Resident Evil 4 remake. Oh yeah. They made him so cool. He's so much. In the original one, he's just like he has like two. He has like two good lines. Yeah. In the original. Got to smoke. <laughs> Hey, you gotta smoke, and then he gets, then he gets fucking impaled, and then you, you just don't see him. They made him so much cooler in the remake. Awesome. It's just, it's just good. They did such a good job on that game. I love that. They did. I'm glad that they made a game that you could enjoy thoroughly. I was so worried that that game was gonna be not good, <laughs> but they, man, they knocked that game out of the park. It's great. Excellent. What's next on my list? High on Life. Yeah, we were talking about Rick and Morty earlier, and this is the. A similar kind of game, similar kind of humor, and I had a lot of fun with that. I played that uh, a few weeks ago. It's a game where you have a bunch of talking guns and you're shooting aliens because they're trying to smoke humans as drugs, i.e. they're getting high on life. Mm -hmm. And they built an entire game around it and honestly, had a lot of fun with it. Had a lot of fun going around, going after all these different bounties on all these evil aliens and killing them all and exploring and just listening to all the wacky humor going around, like the, all the silly humor. I had a lot of fun with it. Neat. So I hope there's a sequel for that because uh, it's uh, it's a great game. And what like the the stuff that's on the in-game television is sometimes so strange and bizarre. They've got weird cartoons. They've got sometimes it's just like mushy noises and tentacles everywhere. And sometimes it's like, is this an actual TV show from like the 1970s? Is that did you make this or is this like a show I've never heard of before? What is going on? It's yeah, just, just it's a very weird game. Hmm. It's very bizarre. And I love how strange it is, and I love how wacky it is. Cool! Yeah. What's next for you? The next one for me is the Dead Space remake. It's another remake of a classic video game. Yeah, again, they did an amazing job making that game. I was I I was skeptical when the when it was announced that they were gonna have Isaac be voiced, but they brought Gunnar Wright, who is the voice of Isaac Clark, they brought him back to do the voices for this game. It's nice when they're consistent across multiple entries. And they did it in a way that makes a lot of sense. Uh, it feels completely normal to have him be uh, to have him talking. They did a lot of improvements to the game that I was very happy for. You no longer need nodes to unlock doors. That's nice. That's very convenient. Um, I don't know if you remember in the original Dead Space, you had to use nodes to unlock doors, but you also had to use nodes to upgrade weapons. Yeah, so you'd always equipment. upgrade your gear and then not have any nodes. You'd, you'd learn to just keep a couple nodes in your inventory and not upgrade your gear when you could because you want to open a door. Because you didn't know if there was going to be a door coming up. Yeah. They got rid of that. It looks amazing. They did a really good job updating the game without changing anything super drastically. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people talk about Resident Evil 4's remake and how they prefer the original. I have not heard anybody say anything similar about the Dead Space remake. No, it's this, just... It's, this new one is better in every conceivable way. There's really no reason to play the original one. Just play the remake. Yeah. Because everything has been improved. It's They made it so much better. You can, if you really want to, walk all the way from the back of the Ishimura to the front of it. They have the tram system in the game, where in the previous, in, in the original... That was how you started and ended every, almost every chapter was by getting on the tram system. Yeah. Getting on or getting off the tram system. 
And that was the way that they hid the loading zones. They set it up now so that, yeah, you go onto the tram system several times throughout the game, but there are ways to access the entirety of the ship from front to back without using the tram system, which is really cool. Yeah, it sounds nice. Um, the characters are a lot less insufferable. Yep. The voice actor does good. They made the flamethrower just an absolute fucking baller of a weapon. I saw that when the, the main character is injured and he's in a cutscene, he'll actually say his lines exasperated. Yeah, him. they have it. They, they recorded multiple takes for every single one of the voice lines so he can do it at different levels of being injured. Yeah, so if you just barely got to the end of the level, he's like, hey, how are you going? You get you guys doing all right? I'm having a good time. <laughs> this is this is fun. <laughs> um, The way you navigate Zero Gravity is imported from the second game. The Pulse Rifle is imported from the second game. It doesn't have the secondary fire that it did in the original, mm. which was stupid. Mm. Where it basically just went... You would crouch down and it would go... And shoot like a... Shoot a like, circle, a, yeah. like a... Like a lawn sprinkler <laughs> yeah. over your head. It's... That, that... There was like two instances where that was ever useful for me in any time I played the original. Mm. They... They really... You can see the amount of care and effort they put into the remake... They really, really did look at the original game and say, we want to stay true to the source material, but we want to make it better. And they succeeded. I really, really hope that they get to do Dead Space 2. Dead Space I don't, 2 doesn't need to be updated as much. I, you said the same thing about the, about the first Dead, about yep. Dead Space yeah, 1. I, I was wrong about that, absolutely, yeah. And it, I will agree with you that Dead Space 2 does still look and play very good. Mm. But if... This is this is the only this is the concession I'm willing to make on this. If they put the same amount of care into the Dead Space 2 remake, if they do it, that they put into the Dead Space 1 remake, there is absolutely no reason why they shouldn't do it. And that's okay. if they put the same amount of care into it. Sure. I'm not sure if there's a whole lot you could do. Then again, it's been a while. Well, actually, I saw that recently with you. I don't know. Maybe there are some things they could make better, but I, I feel like Dead Space 2 was pretty solid when you and I checked it out. Yeah. It's, it's, again, I really like Dead, Dead Space 2 is one of my all-time favorite games. Dead Space 1 and 2 are two of my all-time favorite games, but I do really think that they could, they could make it really good. Well, I'm happy that even though the studio that made those games went under, that the series hasn't been left to languish and you can enjoy new Dead Space. So my penultimate thing here on the list, uh, our cats, Petey and Jojo. Aww. Technically, we got Jojo last year, so, uh... We're still, still put them both on the list no, this you year. No, you can't. I'm no. sorry. You can only put one on I'm the list. I'm sorry, Joji. You, you didn't make the list last year, and you're not eligible for this year. Sorry. So sorry. No, they're both great cats. They're both very well-behaved cats. They're loving and affectionate, and I'm happy to have them in my life. They're always being cute. They know when we've had a bad day. They come up to us. When I'm trying to go to bed at night or on midnight, I go, oh, it's time for bed, time for bed. I start walking downstairs, and Petey runs in front of me. Looks at me and flops over, begging for pets. I go, I, I pet him. Then I go down the stairs a few more steps. And then Petey scurries down and meets me at the landing and flops over there so I can pet him some more. So I, I pet That's not a normal noise your cat makes. Are you sure your cat isn't one of the babies from Dead Space 1? No, I mean, they make weird noises. These, okay. Petey does meow occasionally, but Jojo just goes, Hi. he just honks very, very meekly. He's very quiet. And I'm happy these cats get along with each other. They keep each other entertained. They play around with each other. Uh, PD loves to steal food, so I gotta feed them separately, but they're great cats. They're just great cats, and I never considered myself much of a, a cat person, or a pet person in general. I always thought if I got a pet, it would probably be a dog, but yeah, these cats are great. They generally take care of themselves. They make me smile when they're being goofy. Sometimes they're annoying and obnoxious, but overall, net positive. Hooray! Yeah, great cats. My number four is the game Faith the Unholy Trinity, which I realized did not come out this year, but I played it this year, so shut up. That is what counts. That is the scariest game that I have played in years. I'm not sure I'm familiar with that one. Maybe my entire life. We haven't really talked about it. Faith the Unholy Trinity? What is that even on? It's on It's on a whole bunch of different things. I don't think it's on Switch yet. I just, please bring it to the Switch. I want to play it on the Nintendo <laughs> I Switch. I want to be scared on the subway. Faith the Unholy Trinity is a game where you play as a priest, and there's three, there's three games to it. Curious. The first one is you play as a priest trying to, uh, trying to perform an exorcism, and then the other games build off of that. It looks like it was made on the Atari. All of the... Cutscenes are rotoscoped, huh. and they're all like pixel art. 
The guy that made this game did such an amazing job. He did so much with so little. I, I, I want to talk more about it, but like I don't want to spoil anything. What's the elevator pitch? Because again, I know very little about this game. How long is it? The first one is not very long. I would say that if you know what you're doing, you probably can beat the first one in like, well, if you know what you're doing, you can beat the first one in like 10 minutes. Um, right, if but... you if On like a casual playthrough, I would say the first one will probably take you maybe, maybe an hour. Oh, so they're short games. They're relatively short. The second one will take you maybe two hours. The third one is much longer than the first The first one and the second one. It's actually longer than the first one and the second one put together. Oh. I guess the elevator pitch for this game would be it's The Exorcist, but it's in a 8-bit... It's not even 8-bit. What, what is the Atari? Is the Atari 8-bit? Is it 4-bit? I... The kind of thing where when your character moves, they have two pixels. And <laughs> they have two frames for their movement. <laughs> That's it. It's incredible the amount that they did with so little... All of the voices in the game are all, uh, like, text-to-speech. What's the name of this game again? Faith the Unholy Trinity. It's a mouthful. Yep. It's very good. I've enjoyed playing it so much. For the first time in years when I was playing a video game, I actually got incredibly unsettled. I, I, I don't scare easily. I startle very easily, which is why I never played... I never really played games like... Like Five Nights at Freddy's, also because I was too fucking old. But I startle very easily, so games like that do nothing for me because the, all that game is is just jump scare. I do not scare very easily. It sounds like I might have to take a look at this game. Again, I've not heard much about it, but if it's it, if it's being sung highly by you, you're singing its praises. It's really good. I've enjoyed it. It's been so much fun just playing through it and trying to find all the different endings that are in the game. Oh, so there's multiple endings. There's multiple endings. Uh, kind of like Silent Hill 2? I, I mean, kind of like any game that has multiple endings. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's it's really good. It's really... I cannot recommend it highly enough. If you if you like playing horror games, or if you like games that have a really have a really deep story to them, this game is great. Okay. It's usually not too terribly expensive either, so... All right. Well, I will have to keep an eye out for that in the future and give it a try. Okay, your turn. Uh, the last thing on my list, the, uh, I guess, number one or number five, or however you want to put it, Pikmin 4. Ooh! Yeah, a new Pikmin game came out this year, and I don't normally pick up games as soon as they get released. And but I, I picked it up a few months later, and I played it last month or two, and it is really good. The best Pikmin game, in my opinion. And that's a high bar, because Pikmin 1 and Pikmin 2 were great games, but Pikmin 4 actually has so many improvements over everything. And granted, some of those improvements were in Pikmin 3, because I played that game this year as well. Pikmin 3 was okay. I enjoyed Pikmin 3. It was, a, it was another solid entry. It had some improvements mechanically. But Pikmin 4 is great. It's it's almost like it, they remade Pikmin 1 and sandwiched it as a little side Easter egg for you to find. You can play through the entirety of a remade version of Pikmin 1, hmm. and that's just a side mission in Pikmin 4. It's a, it's a big game. It's got a lot of fun mechanics, a lot of fun enemies, a lot of fun worlds to explore. Is the suck pig still in it? There are plenty of suck pigs. They've got the fire suck pigs, the, the wind suck pigs. They've got new ice suck pigs. Ooh. The new... I don't know if that's what they're actually called. I can't <laughs> they're remember. They're not. No, they're blowhogs or something oh, like that. Oh, blowhog. So I was like really <laughs> close. They have new Danadori challenges where it's basically like a bite size. Like complete this challenge as perfectly as you can in five minutes. And uh, then you, you, you spend four minutes doing it and you go, all right, I can do better. And you play it for another four minutes, you go, okay, I can do better. And then basically you spend an hour doing this one five-minute challenge. So you, so you want to get it just perfect. And they've got a bunch of those challenges, and it's a lot of fun. It's hmm. It shouldn't be as fun as it is. I, it can be maddening sometimes. Like, how how do you want me to beat everything in five minutes? And But it, it gives you the opportunity to do things in overtime. So you go, okay, I was able to do it in eight minutes. And you again... Okay, I was able to do it in seven minutes. Okay, I, I figured out. It, the, the more you do it, the more you learn about how to do it, and the, the Dandori challenges are a lot of fun. There's an actually well-told well told story in the game. A lot of fun characters to meet. Like It's, it's like the only Pikmin game that has NPCs and a quest hub you can talk to and pick up quests for them. I did not know that, that was a thing in this game. Yeah, it's like only in this game. It wasn't in the previous three games. And uh, sometimes, yeah, I don't want to talk to these guys. I just want to pick up their quest. I can skip cutscenes. I can skip dialogue. I can just mash the, the plus button. So I can just skip past all this stuff. If, I, if I'm if i not enthralled by it, I can just move on to the actual gameplay. The game is great. Pikmin 4 is great, and I'm definitely going to pick up the DLC if it ever comes out. And uh, 
hopefully I don't have to wait 10 years for Pikmin 5. Because that's kind of how it is. Like, the, the release window between 2 and 3 was about 10 years, and then yeah, 3 and 4 was another 10 years. I kind of feel like Nintendo doesn't particularly care about Pikmin as much as the fans care about Pikmin. Probably not, but Pikmin 4 is actually making waves, so... All right, well, hopefully they, you know, make a make another one, and it's it's still good. Yeah. I had a great time with it, and I'll probably go back and play some more of it. I never really played the Pikmin games, but that's also probably because I'm not a huge fan of... I. It's basically an RTS. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of RTSs, so that's why I never really played the Pikmin games. Yeah. It's kind of like managing your minions while also solving puzzles, and both of those things appeal to me. I like leading an army, and I like solving puzzles. So Great! Yeah. I guess you could call it an RTS, but it's also kind of a puzzle game. Do you get to make your own character in that game? You do. I it's the remember. only Pikmin game that's got character customization. You're not playing as a set character. You're playing as your own character that you make. Is Olimar still in that game? Yes. Like I said, you can meet Olimar, and then he gives you a retelling of his Pikmin 1 story, and you're basically playing like a two or three hour version of Pikmin 1 within Pikmin 4. Huh. Weird. Yeah. But fun. And it's good, but it's not like you'll never go back to the original Pikmin because the original Pikmin has unique level design. And yeah. Yeah. It, it's, a, it's a retelling. It's not a, it's not a remake. It's just like a different version of Pikmin 1 that you can play mm-hmm. in Pikmin 4. Good stuff. Great. What's next on your list? I don't know what number we're on anymore. I forgot. I can't remember. It doesn't matter. Uh, Armored Core. The first Armored Core game came out many years ago, but that's not the one that's on your list. No, this one is Armored Core 6... Fires of Rubicon. You had a blast playing that. It was a lot of fun. Had, um, had a good time. I, I beat Belteus pre-patch, so suck it, nerds. When it first came out, there were two bosses that were just keeping so many people from playing the game. Mm-hmm. And the first one is the helicopter at the beginning of the game, and people were losing their minds and saying that the helicopter was too difficult. Um, you just you just have to melee the helicopter to death, which doesn't make any sense. It's a sentence that doesn't make any sense. Melee yeah. the hel- it's a game where you're, shoot- fly- you're flying around as a robot shooting at things, and you have to punch the helicopter, of uh, all the things. You have a beam sword, so you just use that. Okay. Yeah. Um, melee the helicopter to death. And then the next one was Balteus, who is basically bullet hell, but you're in a giant mech. And you can't dodge all of them. Well, congratulations on beating those two bosses in a state when they were considered to be quite extremely difficult. They were incredibly difficult, and uh, they actually don't know if they nerfed the helicopter. I know they nerfed Balteas, so whatever. <laughs> um, I had a lot of fun playing that game. I had never played... A, no, I had played an Armored Core game before, but not more than like 20 minutes. So mm-hmm. I just say that I've never, I'd never played one before. Did you end up beating it? Uh, no, I did not. There was so much, there was so much stuff that came out this year. There is, can't fault you. I, I didn't end up beating it. I got a good port, I got a good portion into the game. The cool thing about that game is there's multiple endings and you get the different endings on New Game Plus. So Uh, it's not a very long game. You get the different endings by doing different things on each New Game Plus playthrough. Cool. Um. Is it kind of like a Dark Souls kind of thing when you're in a giant mech? I really hesitate to say it's like Dark Souls because it's similar in that you lock on to enemies and you can dodge. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I suck at it, uh, but it's a, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed playing it. The amount of customization you get is really cool. You can set up all kinds of different builds and the game really does encourage you to try out different things. When you're playing the game, if you die... You can just immediately go into the build menu and completely rebuild your mech from scratch to try to find something that will work better against the boss you are fighting. Nice. What is your next one? The next one on my list is the Outer Wilds DLC Echoes of the Eye. Did they come out with another DLC? No, it is the only DLC, but I I played it this year. Okay. I played Outer Wilds a year or two ago, and I played the DLC this year, and it is really good. To be fair, I didn't quite understand how a detective game works when I first went through the base game, so I was really struggling my way through Outer Wilds, and I only fully appreciated what it did until I was done. But once I finished it, I understood what I was supposed to do. So when I went into the DLC... I had a a notebook ready. I was ready Mm -hmm. to write down my thoughts. Mm -hmm. I was brainstorming puzzle solutions and what my theories were so I could consult my notes and follow up on them. And I I think having a notebook really helped me with the Outer Wilds DLC. When I was playing Echoes of the Eye, I had an absolute blast. I couldn't wait to get back to it. And I, I would play it for four hours and then I'd have to be done. But I just wanted to keep on pursuing my theories, see if I could make a few more steps in the right direction. It was a really enjoyable thrill ride. 
I really think Outer Wilds is going to stay in my top 10 video games of all time for a long time. And the DLC was just as good. It was, it's such an amazing, almost euphoric, atmospheric experience. It's weird that you liked that game so much because nobody else really seemed to like that game. It was really forgettable. I didn't understand the, like, why did they put like the Rick and Morty ripoff doctor at the beginning of the game? Are you thinking of Outer Worlds again? Yeah, I was just trying to see if you were going to catch on. <laughs> I, was I, was just, I was just talking shit <laughs> yeah. about Outer Worlds. Basically, just as good as the base game. It's like having a second campaign to go through. It's just a little bit shorter. It's, but it's that good. It's a really good game. The wow factor is still there. And you're never tired of trying to figure out what the secrets are. And that eureka moment. I lived for that eureka moment. It was so thrilling. And I hope one day you get to return to the base game because even though you had some frustrations with it, I think now that I understand how you play it, I could help you understand how to play it too. I'll have to play it at some point. It might be the kind of thing that I need to do it on my own. Possibly. Is there any other video game or show or anything on your list? The only other thing I have to add to that, and I haven't played a lot of it, which is I, I guess it would have to be an honorable mention, would be Ready or Not, which the full game just released this month. Up until this point, it was like early access, open beta. Okay. Ready or Not is a first person, it's a first person shooter that is a, I guess you could call it a spiritual successor to the SWAT games. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you ever played any of those, but they're very strategy oriented, tactical first person shooters. The goal is not to run through the level and shoot every single person in the face. It's a stealth game then. No, the goal is to clear the level as by the book as possible. And the only way to get a S ranking is to kill absolutely zero people. Okay. Well, that's kind of similar to how it was with uh, the Metal Gear Solid games back in the day. No, because like for the first Metal Gear Solid game, it didn't matter if you killed anybody. Well, I'm, I'm thinking back to like Metal Gear Solid 2, Metal Gear Solid 3, where you get better rankings depending it's on not how... A, it's not a stealth game, it's though. It's not a stealth game. Because you're a police... Uh, you're part of a SWAT team. <laughs> So the more by the book you are, you know, the, the less of a loose cannon cop you are, the better you get paid. It's not even that you're, because you're as operating as part of a team. You have other people. So it's a co-op game. It is a co-op game. You can play it co-op, but normally you have control of four bots and you can tell them where to stack up on a doorway, what doorways to stack up. You can have them enter two different doorways at the same time. You can tell them what weapons they're supposed to be using. So you have to do a lot of thinking on the fly of how you are going to approach specific scenarios. So you're commanding a, a team of four players trying to defeat a couple enemies in a level. So is it more like XCOM then, if it's not a stealth game? Nope. Nope. I, I'm having a trouble. I'm, I'm having some difficulty envisioning this game. It's imagine. Uh, I don't know how to describe it to you. Other, it's it's a first person shooter. The first level that you play in this game is a level where there. It's basically a gas station robbery that has gone wrong. There are a certain amount of enemies in the level. They give you a briefing before you do the mission. That's some, like okay. okay. So there's at least three dudes. The police got called on them. They shot at the cops, and now they're barricaded inside the building. We don't know where they are. Go in there and find them. I see. So you're... and don't kill them. Okay. Unless they shoot at you first, and then kill them. Okay. The the game tells you at the beginning we're not here to make widows or orphans. We're here to save lives. Okay, I appreciate a game that values even theoretical human lives. So you can um, you you get all kinds of less lethal options that you can theoretically use. You can mace people. You can fire tear gas into the room beforehand. You can throw stinger grenades in there, which are less lethal grenades that just fire rubber ball bearings all over the place. And you can give commands to teammates telling them to breach a door when you're going to breach the other door? Yes. Okay. You can do stuff like that. Um, one of the interesting things about this game that I really appreciate is that less lethal does not mean that it won't kill somebody. <laughs> it just means it probably won't kill. I have discovered... Have, through, you, have you accidentally killed somebody with a rubber bullet? I have discovered in my personal life through extensive testing that there are two types of non-lethal. Mm. There's fun to shoot at your friends and then there's actually might be lethal. Yeah. I have at least once fired a non-lethal round at someone that was not complying and hit them in the neck and they died. In the game. In the game. <laughs> Sorry, I should specify. In, in Ready or Not, I fired a non-lethal 12-gauge round at someone, hit them in the neck, and they died. Thank you for specifying. 
I don't know how that killed him, but it killed him. Well, the human body can, uh, it, it's mysteriously robust and also mysteriously fragile. So I'm going to assume that, that it, these missions are like five to ten minutes long each, but you keep on replaying them. You get two minutes in, you go back, two minutes in. Yeah, yeah. like the first mission in the game, my I think, oh god, what is my fastest clear time on the first mission in the game? The first mission in the game, I think my fastest clear time is something like four minutes, mm -hmm. which is really not that long. Um, and the, the reason it wasn't shorter is because one of the civilians was uh, hiding behind a box and I didn't know where they were. So I spent like two minutes running around trying to find this last dude to handcuff him and I had no idea where he was. Okay. Uh, yeah. Ready or Not has been a lot of fun. Uh, I, I don't... It's an honorable mention for me because I haven't really played it enough to it came be out like, so recently that you it just I had played I had played the open beta before, but like I had played the open beta at a point where the, some of the assets in the game were just straight up gray walls <laughs> because they hadn't actually finished it. One of the enemies is a gray wall with a gun. I mean, some of them were just re it was you would see the exact <laughs> same enemy eight times in the level because. They hadn't finished it yet. One of the placeholders is a, is a villain from Doom, so you, you got this 8-bit enemy coming at you. But man, that game has been so much fun to play. It's been great. I have I have loved just clearing levels over, like learning the intricacies of the level. Campaign mode? If you don't do things by the book, if your team members get injured, they might be gone and you have to replace them with somebody else. Oh. If you accidentally kill civilians or... If one of your team members dies, or if you don't follow certain procedures, your team members will leave for psychological reasons, and you have to get a new team member. <laughs> okay. I, if you're going to make this only an honorable mention, I, I suppose we might need to keep it short. So Yeah. And what is your final entry on the list? My best of for this year is that I got married. That's sappy. You can't put a sappy thing on the end of the list. Yeah, I, I, I did deal with it. Okay, I, guess I got I'll, married. I'll deal with it. Guess what, ladies? I'm taken. Congratulations. To all one woman that watches this channel. <laughs> There's more than the one. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes, I got married uh, earlier this year. And believe it or not, he didn't invite me to the wedding. Nope. It was a very small wedding. We were going to, originally we were going to elope. So we were originally going to do that, uh, and then what what we decided to do is just we were we just had a very small wedding that was basically our immediate family. We invited the people, we invited the people that we didn't want to spend the rest of our lives having them being offended that we didn't invite them to our wedding. Mm -hmm. And you didn't invite me because you knew I wouldn't be offended. I totally understand. Yeah, exactly. That's the greatest honor that anyone can bestow upon me is we, we care about you so much that you don't have to come to our wedding. And I go, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for liberating me from that obligation. Thank you for liberating me from the obligation of having to buy and put on a suit and wear it for an extended period of time you could and been, pretend that I enjoy being around people. You could have invited me like a casual, like I could wear slacks or whatever. It's fine. Yeah, I, we got we got married earlier in this year and we're both incredibly happy. It's gone very well. That's great. And as an addendum to that one, I also got a house, which I'm not as excited about. You're more excited about no longer living in the apartment. Yes. Like, the house ownership is kind of a hassle, but thank and God it, we're not in the apartment anymore. Yeah. I, well, it's so great how they kept on jacking your rates up every few months. I liked the apartment. The apartment was amazing and wonderful, and I loved it. I did not like property management, and I did not like my neighbors, and I did not like the area the apartment was in. If I could have just picked up the apartment and plopped it down on a plot of land, then I would have just done that. But I can't do that. So the two best of things on my list for this year are I got married, which I never thought was ever going to happen, and I got a house, which I also never thought was ever going to happen. Rolled up into one big best of the year for you. Yay! Excellent. Glad things Yay! are on the... People happy. I'm happy things are on the up and up for you. Sorry you have to do all the house maintenance. I know that's not pleasant. Yeah, we are we are both very happy to be married. It's one of those things where like occasionally we're both just like, <laughs> we're married. <laughs> Who let us get married? <laughs> They're stupid. Those yeah. idiots. I can't believe they let us do this. Those stupid morons. Yeah, you, you both seem to be good for each other. You both make each other happy. I'm happy you've got that going on for you. Congratulations once again. Thank you. I guess that's that's pretty much it for best of for me. I really don't have anything else. 
Well, so we've talked about the best of 2023. Do you have anything you're looking forward to in 2024? Jeez, I, I'm not actually because I I don't even know what's coming out next year. I haven't really been paying attention. I guess I'm kind of I'm kind of excited for Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2, but that's coming out in like September. Hmm. So Space Marine 2 is coming out. That'll be that'll be interesting. I'm excited for uh, the game Routine, but Routine so far has like three separate times been like game's totally coming out. You guys get ready for Routine, and then they just never they don't say anything for months. So you continue to get excited about it. Yeah, I get excited for it, and then it's just like oh, it's probably not gonna happen. Mm-hmm. So I man, I really want the game Routine to come out. That game looks awesome. I, I probably will never be able to play it. It's probably never actually going to come out, but it looks really cool. Um, I'm not looking forward to any games that come out next year because I don't play games when they get released. So maybe next year I'm looking forward to playing Baldur's Gate 3. Maybe a few other games that have just kind of slipped through my fingers, which is actually quite a lot of games because I don't have a a lot of time to spend on games because I'm busy working. But yeah, I'm sure my, my backlog keeps on getting full, so I'll probably keep on showing through that. Like, uh, there's uh, the second Subnautica game. I've been meaning to get around to that. I heard that uh, Mario Thousand Year Door is getting a remake, so maybe I'll play that. Mm. I haven't played that one nearly as much as the original one for the N64, so that could be a lot of fun. Yeah, Frostpunk 2 is coming out, supposedly, in 2024. Gecko Gods is supposed to be coming out in 2024. That game looked kind of cute. Yeah, I guess there's not really a whole lot that I'm, like, super excited for in 2024, or at least that I can think of off the top of my head. I'm sure games will come out, we'll play them, and movies and TV shows, and we'll... Yeah, Space Marine 2, but, like, I, whenever people ask me about Warhammer, it's like, I'm not the biggest Warhammer fan. I, like, I enjoy it casually. Mm. So I get all these people being, like, throwing Warhammer quotes at me, and I'm just <laughs> like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about, man. Mm. It's just like, I just kind of like Warhammer casually. I want to play as a big, stupid Space Marine, and I want to I slice up a bunch of Tyranids with a sword that is a chainsaw. That um, does sound fun. So hopefully that'll be enjoyable. And then routine, if and when that ever freaking comes out. <sighs> Hideo Kojima announced a new game that seems weird weird for Hideo Kojima. Uh, it's pretty weird then. It's really weird. You know, I, I, I admire that he basically just makes the games that he wants to make. So you know, more power to him. There's so many people out there that don't get to make the thing that they want to make. Mm-hmm. They have to release Dead Space 2 with a bunch of multiplayer shoehorned into it talking about dead space 3 then huh no i'm talking about dead space 2 how they had to shoehorn a bunch of multiplayer into it oh i forgot that was in that yeah game. right holy crap the thing that nobody plays ever because it was pointless i think actually i saw some there, there were some people recently playing it but like it, it's like because i think incomprehensibly the servers are still up oh all right anyway yeah I, I guess i can't think of anything that's actually like announced that i'm excited for in 2024 Kung Fu Panda 4 is coming out next year. I'm kind of looking forward to that. The first three movies were good. They're making another one? Yeah, they're making another one. I saw the trailer for it. Looks like it could be good. There's a movie about rally racing coming out that I might kind of be excited for. But again, I don't watch I don't watch movies. Yeah. The last movie I saw in theaters was... Oh, no, I saw Oppenheimer in theaters. Oh, okay. So you saw something that was the last movie I That was the last movie I saw in theaters, and it was actually this year. Even though it didn't make your list, did you enjoy it? It was a really good movie. Okay, cool. I mean, the, I mean the, Christopher Nolan's a great director. Uh, I really liked that movie. I thought it was very well done. Um, yeah. I'm looking forward to, in 2024, them coming out with Vampire Mansion 2. Is that announced or... No, I'm just <laughs> making up shit. Yeah, it'd be nice if they did for you. The Sheriff Amy DLC. That's just an outfit, isn't it? Oh no, that's a character in the game, yeah, right? Yeah, that's a character. The, the, <laughs> the sheriff. The sheriff's name is is Amy. She used to be Valna's adjutant. I know more about this game than I should. I know more. I know more about this game than I really should. Deep vampire mansion lore. There's so much. <laughs> there isn't that much. It's not that deep. You run from the vampire. She catches you. She dances. You've reached the end of the video. Congratulations. Thanks for supporting the channel, and uh, we'll be back next year. Have a good. Have a good year, everybody. Okay, bye. Goodbye, everyone.